Hello everybody, welcome to Q&A and Critique number 82. We're currently here live at 2015 UTC, or 1515 local time, to with the B4 Artist community to talk about live stream digital art questions and answers. Today is a low-key day, very chill and relaxed. We have three key topics that we're going to talk about. First topic that we're going to see is creating a render within under an hour. So this is more of a walkthrough type of question and answers topic where I will be taking a model kindly provided by Haley here, who's currently feeling a little bit under the weather, but he shared one of his models for feedback. And we're going to also create a quick render from this model in within, in this case, 30 to 45 minutes. I'll be walking through every tool that I use. I'll be explaining anything that you, I will be doing and we'll be quickly creating the render from the ground up. And after that, we're going to be talking, uh, taking a look at an art review. We have art provided by Mr. Crusader who has some updates. Haley with his helicopter right here. Tyler Mueller or Nemo has an update to his last craft with a few new renders. Yard, one of our own developers will be for artist. He also created a new render. Lore Hal, which has a music, a video coming out on Instagram soon. And he has published a couple of updates. And we have a kaleidoscope video by Toxic Cuba with an accompanying tutorial. And last but not least, I have a gift for you for everyone who is connected here today. And I'm happy that you're here. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, I've been publishing to Twitter some Geometry Nodes examples, and this product I will be giving to you for free. That's because I think it might be useful for you later. Every node group and every example is heavily documented, framed, and organized with color coding as well. So it should be easy to pick up the curve write nodes, the curve read nodes, and the curve operator nodes or operations. So without further ado, let's begin with this render. So back in the day, and to give you a little bit of history, back in the day with Stephen Scott, if you're searching up as online render on YouTube, we used to have these Blender Royale competitions inside the Arendelle Discord server. This started during the quarantine in 2020, and we continued to do this for 80, nearly 90 weeks, where we competed with each other, and we had 45 minutes to 50 minutes to complete a render based on a word. And I should probably start the event in Discord. Give me. There you go. Thanks for reminding me. So with that, we create um, before uh, prompt based art came out, we actually had a prompt. And with this prompt, we would create the render. So if you visit my art station, which is uh, artstation.com slash grace, username D-R-A-I-S-E, you can find a number of my pieces that I have. It's loading at the moment. And here we go. Each one of these pieces that I created were done within one hour. A key aspect that I want to take a look at here is a Blender Royale number 49, which is one of my favorites. The number 49 has a stylized caravan, and that was the prompt, the caravan. And uh, Pancakes, he also animated it, and it looked very good. So this piece here was created in one hour, all the modeling, and we're going to do something similar, but with the helicopter. Which means we're also going to take a look at answering the question for you, Haley, which we in part answered last week with Duncan Rudd. Uh, about stylized modeling and realistic modeling. Uh, the pros and cons, and the different types of aspects. But today, you took a hand or you shared your model, which is more of a stylized helicopter. When did it comes in with the red metal, some chairs inside. Got a really cute little toy factor to it. Very nice. 
and we're going to see what we can do with it. So today, the prompt is helicopter. We already have the hero asset, and we have 30 minutes to 45 to begin. So let's begin. And also, if you are interested in these types of events in the future, if you'd like, no pre-made model says I'm kind of drunk. Yes, generally the rules for their Blender Royale is you start from scratch and you are allowed to use textures, you are allowed to use HDRIs, and you are allowed to use um, shaders, pre-made shaders and node groups. But you cannot use any pre-made assets. In this case, though there were some Blender Royales where we did make an exception, and which is similar to today due to the time constraint, is having one pre-made model. If we go back to here, in my art station again, there was one particular piece that I made and also shared with the Looking Glass community, which was this Blender Royale number 79. The prompt was Render with a Car, where the car was created by Stephen Scott, the host, and with the car we created a render within 45 minutes. In this particular piece, I also converted it into 3D. See it on here on my website. I can't write. I made a little hologram with this piece and it was showcased on their website as well. Let's take a look at the holograms. Still loading. Need to optimize the website. Sorry, I went to a page that was under work. Progress. Scroll down. Are you using 3GS to display your models? Uh, no, I'm using a website called Blocks. So here it is right here. So if you go to blocks.glass, I think it is open right now. It's in alpha still. But you can uh, create a render using a Blender add-on to create this kind of holographic card effect inside of a browser and this particular um, piece of code you can embed it onto twitter or you can embed it into uh, discord or onto your website so i use this piece that i created one hour and i converted it into 3d so that's what i'm using i just embedded the code onto my website so let's begin let's start the timer And I'll explain the process. So I'm going to give myself 25 minutes and I'll walk you through it. So the general topic that we're going to take a look at about speed modeling or speed renders is that block out and imperfections are perfectly okay. However you do things is perfectly fine. Understanding your tools and how to do layout movement is good to know. Understanding the interface and all of these other aspects is good to have clear. But in general, the aim of the game is to do the most amount of visual work for your message before you focus on the details. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start with an idea. Okay, 25 minutes on the clock, starting now. First things first, I need an idea. I'm going to create a new collection and I'm just going to call this ideas and I'm going to create a grease pencil just to have a general idea with the grease pencil to briefly draw an idea. So I go into draw mode and where is it? I'm going to choose just a simple brush like this. Okay, good. So if I have a helicopter and I go inside the camera view, Let's just go inside the camera view. I'm always going to start with my camera, do a general idea. And I want to create kind of this toy helicopter hero shot. Maybe. maybe it's flying through some canyons or something. I want to make it look like a... when I was a kid, I used to play with my toys and I used to imagine the sofas, the couch, the hallways, the different parts of the house, an entire landscape. And my father, he created this um, wooden tile floor and there was an island made of carpet in the lounge. And there was the, the corridor around the carpet of this open lounge was made of wood. So I could pretend that the wood was like a river 
and the carpet was land, and the sofas and the couches were cliffs. So I'm going to use this toy helicopter and create this quick little cliff scene. So I could start with like over here, a big giant cliff. And maybe I'm going to frame it from the other the other cliff over here. And maybe in the background here, I'm going to put some mountains, maybe with some quick trees and uh, some vines hanging down. And maybe, you know, since this is environment, some birds flying behind the helicopter. And that's all I need to do. The rough idea. So with Blockout, let's start with Blockout. And that means we can switch back to the next stage, which is called Blocking. Blocking with an O. So Blocking, I always start with a cube. Move it into position like here. And I just kind of get a rough idea of a way on Tweak. So yeah, I kind of shape a cube here. Shape a cube up here, pull it back like this. Uh, get another cube over here. Maybe I have to pull this one to the back a bit more because I want more space, like this. This cliff over here, I'm just going to put it nice and big like that. I'm only going to focus on the things that I will see. Everything outside the camera, I don't need to worry about because it's not important. So now in the background here, I have some mountains. I'm going to move this to the background a little bit. I'm going to subdivide it nice and quickly, like this. So the controls that I'm using is basically in B for Artists, I'll be pressing W. So if I'm going to bring out my hotkeys, you can see what I'm doing. Second. What I'm basically doing is to help me to do my block out quicker, I've added two hotkeys to the system. So in Unreal Engine, typically you can press down Control, then left mouse button, and it will move in 3D space. So I did a similar thing inside of B4 Artists or Blender, is where I hold down Shift and left click, and this will move the cube away or in the X and Y axis of the whole world with just a single left click. And if I hold down Alt and Shift, it will move, ah, oh, sorry, uh, Shift, right click, and what's there? Forgot the button. So with that, I can use this and push it to the background without changing my view. I can use the Shift D button to duplicate my mountains. And I can pull parts of it forward and have a general idea of my shot. So now that I have this more or less set up as a block out, you can see that everything is made out of basic geometry, made out of blocks. I can uh, focus on this and get this done. So let's hide the shot. And let's focus on the next part. So that's block out. That's blocking. That's the general idea of what I want the shot to be. And maybe I can like bring the mountain down a little bit. And now I, since I have a general idea of what my blocking is, I can now focus on the medium details. So let's focus on the medium detail. So if I mentioned earlier from a long time ago, when you think of a quick render and a general idea for layout, you start with block out, which is the big general idea, and then you get to the medium pieces, the medium details. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the three cubes, I'm going to hit join, or I could use the, the toolbar up here to hit join, and I'm going to go into sculpt mode. So when I go into the sculpting layout, you can see that my silhouette is framing the helicopter kind of nicely. Up here in the top right, you can see that the shape is okay. The language, very clear. And now that I have this cube set up, I can go into sculpt mode. I can hit remesh, box of remesh. And this will give me a basic shape so that I can start kind of like shaping in the rock into this particular um, model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the V of uh, C key and B for artist or just F key in Blender and I'm going to use clay strips the default to kind of sculpt in some rock shapes and I'm going to just focus around the camera and I'm going to just remesh to slightly smaller not too much or it might crash remesh and do it a bit more I have a rough idea 
Going to remesh once more. See if it can fix those holes. No, it's not. That's a problem. Okay, so if I'm having a hard time, a quick and easy dirty solution is cover it up. So when it comes to blocking out your ideas and you need a bit more control, so I use the 3D cursor. Why can't I say it? There we go. So if I use my 3D cursor and I'm having problems rotating something, I usually switch my transforms into 3D cursor and then I place my cursor and I use this point to rotate what I need to do. So I can use a piece that I've already sculpted and I can move it over the problems to hide them nice and quickly. Nobody can tell or nobody needs to know that I use this technique to hide broken stuff. So I can go back to my clay sculpting. I just duplicated the mesh a little bit and I'm using this uh, piece here kind of to hide the problems that I found in the mesh. So now I've got this part sorted. Now I can do some uh, basic things. So since this is a Blender Royale, I don't have a lot more time. I've already uh, got 17 minutes left. So as you can see, the first quarter of my time, I've got the general idea. Now I'm using the next amount of time, maybe about another quarter or so, to do the medium details. And the other quarter of my time, I need to finish doing the lighting and the shaders. And then in the last bit of it, I can start making it look good to get a good render. So when you dimension a big project, it is basically repeating this process, but for a bigger project. So in this case, now we're going to focus on the medium details for the budget that we have, which means the cliff over on this side, I could uh, cheat again, just duplicate it. Um, since it's already remeshed, bring it around. Remember the, the placing the cursor to help me get the, whoops, the rotations right. So there, turn off the camera and move. So I can move this, I can move this into position here, bring it down a little bit like here, go inside my camera view again, make sure I'm not too distracted about things. Maybe I will do move the rock up a little bit like this and make it plausible, get back to my clay strips, click on the clay strips and start painting that in just to kind of get a rough rock shape, delete the other rock because I don't need it anymore. This rock here, do some clay strips as well, kind of get that uh, rough rock shape um, flipped in. Now we've got a general idea. Maybe I need a bit more shape language, so I'm going to use the elastic deform. I usually actually um, map this to Control G, because it's a very good tool to have in my to kind of help me shape my language. And good. Maybe I move the camera down just a little bit. You make it a bit more dramatic. Yeah. Bring this up a little bit. There's a the helicopter flying in. And to push this down a little bit. This part up here I kind of like, so I'll push that in. And we're good. So now these mountains here, next things we got to do is make them smooth shaded. So right click smooth shade and we're going to focus on other medium details. So another medium detail that I wanted was that I wanted some bushes and things. So let's think of some bushes I could do for this quick particular shot nice and quickly. So I'm going to make a cube. I'm going to do the same concept of like a, using a um, basic uh, shapes and things like this. Let me just switch this back to medium point. So I'm just going to just um, do this, do this, just uh, rotate this around as well, or do a whole bunch of them like this. So these cubes, what I'm going to do is, since I don't have a lot of time, I'm just going to join them together using Control J or the join operator. I'm going to go into edit mode, go into face mode, I'm going to go onto select, I'm going to select random, but first I have to deselect. So select random. Oh, 
I might actually subdivide first. So we're going to select everything. Edge. Subdivide. Maybe I'll do it twice. And then I go to select. Deselect everything. Select random. And delete. So now that I have this OK, I'm going to go into my mesh. Transform. No, sorry. Object. Transform. Operators. And I'm going to select randomize. So the randomize option here is going to give me the option to randomize vertices just a little bit. And if I open up this panel here and turn it up a little bit more, and now I can use this as my foliage, my hanging foliage. And I'm going to scale it, reset its rotation, scale it in a little bit like this. And this is going to be my hanging foliage. So let's start thinking about my time, which I have here. I'm at the halfway point. This is about as much I can do with modeling. And now I have a budget to do my shaders. So in this case, we're going to switch to my shading mode. Go into the camera again. I'm going to create a new material. And I'm just going to use basic materials. Some subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering is going to be greenish. And I'm going to make sure the subsurface radius is 1, so it is white. And basically, just use this. If I need a little bit of noise, I'll get the noise texture. And I will get a mix RGB and change it to color. And I'm going to use the factor in the noise. And then I'm going to pick my two colors that I have. Why not? Throw it into the base. And then wait till it compiles. And then change the scale just a little bit to give me a little bit of variety, just a tiny bit. Turn the detail down, why not? So with, now that I have this little bush here, I can like duplicate it. I can move it into the world space, move it up a little bit, uh, move it around, move it to the back even more, uh, move it a uh, kind of like this bush feel, maybe like a, yeah, just it's just hanging, hanging vines and stuff. And if I'm having too much difficulty, like, positioning everything, I can go back to my transform, hit the randomize transform button, and I'm going to randomize only rotation and the Z just a little bit. And eh, that one's not going to be a useful one. So the Z is the one that I want. And it rotates them a little bit to kind of uh, differentiate them. And I'm good. Now with the rocks, I'm going to create a new material. And in this case, b 4 artist comes with an asset library. So if I change the editor, so unhide the editor, change it to the asset browser. If I go inside the default library, I go to node groups, shader node groups, masks. So in the masks, I have this one called uh, hard edge, something that works with Eevee. If I change the view, I can see one that works with Eevee. So I'm using Eevee to render. I'm going to use this one called Hard Edge with Eevee. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go back inside uh, the node group if I go to full screen. I'm going into Shader. Or Color, sorry. I'm going to Color, Mix Colors. But it should be here while well, we fix this in the future version. I'm going to use this as a factor. I'm going to use the coordinates of uh, just a normal. Uh, Texture coordinate. This generated will do. I'm going to use this in the base color. So if I take a look at one color here, I'm just going to sit here and compile. Okay, what's happening? Oh, it's compiling. One second. Okay, so now it's finished compiling. I can make one color black, the other color white. Make the strength larger, the minimum, I want it even less. You can see it's creating kind of like this edge wear effect. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, maybe I can add some noise. Uh, edge break. Make it a bit more like this. And now I can choose a color. This color could be kind of a grayish color. The other one could be white. I'm going to get a bump map node. I'm going to use the same colors into the height. To put that into the normals. 
Take a look at the time. We've got eight minutes left. I'm gonna let it compile. Stress is killing me. But basically, compiling now, just give me a second. Now that I got the bump sorted, I can up the strength to nice and to be kind of ridiculous. Five is really cool to me. And I'm going to copy the shaders to the other four rocks. So I use Material Utilities, which is an add-on included into Blender. And you can press uh, Shift Q, and this will copy materials to select. Or if you're in this panel, you do the drop down, and you could do the same. Copy materials to select it. Now that I've copied it in, we're good. And now with the mountains, let's just do another material. In the mountains, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a separate XYZ. I'm going to get the Z into a map range value. And then I'm going to use another mix color into the factor. I'm going to put this into here. I'm going to make this black and white. We can see it. And what I basically did is I chose the z-axis of the object and I'm telling it to be I kind of okay, just get the generated coordinates. Or the object. There we go. If we go outside of the camera and just focus on the mountain here. Red value. Just use the window value. Why isn't it working? Yeah. Ah, strange. Why a gradient instead of a separate XYX? Gradient texture? Yeah, it could work. Uh, one is faster than the other. Even then, it's still not doing it. I've got six minutes That's left. Sick. So when it comes to these projects, sometimes you hit a wall. And when you hit a wall, the best thing to do is to think of something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside my color attributes, creating a color attribute. Press uh, 4 to get into color attributes. I'm going to get into my brushes, and paint, and then I'm inside the actual material input. I'm going to use a color attribute, select the color, place it into the base color to my actor. And now if I go back into my black color or white, black paint it black back to my brushes brush shape white oh, that's why I don't have a lot of um to apply the modifier and oh, that's good enough I got some gradients more or less go back to my painting I could do this again paint black switch around Go into white. Now I have a rough gradient painted in. Go into the camera view. Rotate it. There you go. Change the color to something like a green mountain. This back into rendered mode. The other color I want it kind of like a brownish color. Good there. I'm going to turn off my roughness. Specular. And then I'm going to just delete the other mountains because I don't block out. Sometimes you can sacrifice things. Get into here, rotate it around, get over here, pull it to the back a little bit. And we have four minutes. So now that we're good here, I'm going to find the lights. I'm going to delete them all. I'm going to start in complete blackness. So with that, since I want this to kind of be an epic, I'm going to get a sun lamp. I'm going to bring it in from the outside like this. 
going to also add in some bloom, add in some screen space reflections, some refraction, let it compile, and I'm going to up the lamp to 10, and I make it a yellowish color. You already start to see that things are starting to look really uh, like this. And usually when you're working with light, we've got three minutes left. We've got to add in a fill light. So I'm going to just like use snapping to the curve. I'm going to pull this towards the camera. Camera to the bottom right a little bit. Down. Rotate it up. And make this kind of a blue fill color that's coming in from the, the front of the helicopter. I'm going to bump this up to like 5,000 watts. Is a bit too much. Drop it down. 1,000. And I'm going to make this a bigger lamp. So this is going to be my fill light. And then I'm going into my world shader. And I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to use a world shader from another file. So if I go into my geometry nodes file that I'm going to share with you, I'm going to my world folder, select my EV sky. I'm going to append that. I'm going to select my EV sky. Now I have a rough sky, and now we have some rough rocks going on. Shade smooth as well. There's actually quite a lot of specular on the rocks, so what I'm going to do is shader the specular and just going to turn it off. And now we have something, the key aspects. We've got two minutes. I'm going to create a big cube like this. And in this cube, I'm going to go into my shading, create a new material, delete the principled, go into shader and select principled volume, plug that into the volume socket, and I'm going to make it slightly blue, and the density, I'm going to drop it quite a bit. So here we have this. You can move it to the back or to the front a little bit. And I could start to think about uh, light uh, pulling in the scene. And I've got one minute, 15 seconds. So where's my camera? It is. Cool thing to hide details, you turn on depth of field, make it select, make the f-stop really small, like 0 0.2, and change your focus onto the camera so that I'm looking at just The helicopter and everything else is kind of blurred out. 0.1, made it five blades, and okay, so we have a little bit like this, we could like that, we've got a couple of plants. Obviously, if I had more time, it would be good. We've got 30 seconds, so we're going to compositing. And in this case, the only thing that we can do right now is go into the camera view, turn on nodes and color balancing. So I'm just going to go into my color output, color correction, color balance, and basically just bump the whites, drop the blacks, and change it to the color that I kind of want, like a warms and reds, and we're good. We're done. So I hit render. Time is up. No additional time for rendering. Yes, no. Usually they give us five <laughs> minutes to render. But now that we have this um, shot more or less set up, I've hidden some of the, um, the imperfections with depth of field. I created some rough plants by randomly removing geometry. I angled the camera and we did a rough block out with the rocks and things, mountains in the background. And we created a rough render with some warm colors and some cool colors. We use two lights in this case, and we've got this helicopter flying through the ground. And this was all done within 25 minutes, but the process is the same. If we take a look at the process, bring up this window. Always start with a concept or an idea. So if you have a clear idea from the beginning, you can focus on it. The next one you want to think about is block out. 
make do a rough plan or sketch with geometry of what you want to do then after that focus on medium to small details depending on the time budget after that focus on materials or look dev look development then focus on lighting start in black and then from there you go on to the rendering pizzazz so for example uh, the lens effects color uh, volumetrics etc if you have time and with that you can create a very fast render so do you have a question about this process anything that i need to clarify before i move on to the art review ah we do have a question here Haley has asked uh, what you are doing with my model is very cool so what do you actually think of the actual helicopter model it's actually based off the fiat 7002 helicopter so this is good to know let's take a closer look fiat 7002 helicopter Oh wow, it is a very interesting helicopter. So the shape of the helicopter is actually almost like a toy. Wow. Very interesting. By the looks of it, I think you've done a pretty good stare of it. Maybe it's a bit thinner than I, the actual model in 3D. I think you did a good job. The only key differences that I notice is at the front of the helicopter and maybe a little bit on the sides. Just basically the window framings, they need a bit more work. it's also a lot thinner than your model as you can see here schematic the model if you're going for one for one um, you got to be aware of the width of your measurements because realism is about um, is about dimensions to make something look real it's always about perfect dimensions dimensions that are one for one sized to something that's realistic so in this case, with your particular model, if we take a closer look here, you can see that the model looks very wide. You may need to make it thinner and then think about the details. If you're thinking about something stylized, which, uh, which almost feels like this, also with the blades of the helicopter, they could be a bit thicker or wider. In this case, with this particular helicopter, I'm going to grab all the camera. I grab these pieces here and I'm going to just rotate it around a little bit if you're going to stylize this a little bit more what you could do is you could make things look um, yeah since this is a wide model you can make it look um, a little bit thicker on this if it's stylized so um, if you want to make it stylized usually thickness and dimensions change because things are stylized. Realism, dimensions are per picture perfect. But if I am working inside a stylized way, I could use a displacement modifier. And I could, uh, whoops, I got the wrong thing. If I select, for example, these struts here, this strut here, I can add a displacement modifier. And right now it's a bit too thick. I can just bring it down just a little bit, like this. And I can start to change how things start to be stylized. Grab the tail for as well. You can add another displacement modifier, make it a little bit thicker. The, the blade up here at the top, I can use a displacement modifier again. I can make it feel thicker. It starts to look a lot more like a toy because toys they require a stronger structure to be played with and plastic is a lot harder to keep it thin 
So you can use uh, a realistic model and you can start to minimize details. Work with that. Same with the body or the chassis. So I can add a displacement with too much here. Bring it down. Bring it out just a little bit. And with that, I can, uh, it kind of starts to create a more of a cartoon feel. But with that, you can kind of understand that you can create a model that looks like a toy from something that is based on realistic dimensions just by changing proportions, changing thickness, changing, um, removing details that are not necessary, um, adding details that are not so due to, in the realistic aspect of the references, you can see that, um, if you take a closer look, like uh, one of these photos where it's kind of, uh, this one's a bit more clear. Take a quick, well, not too clear. This one. If we take a closer look, for realism, you can see that we have the big, medium, small details, but we also have a lot of very small details. For example, on the blade up here, we have the top part, we have the gimbal, we have the exhaust system, we have the levers to control the angle, we have a counterweights, we have um, some wheels here, we have some this uh, beam that's sticking out in the front, we have the crossbar where the controls are, we have the control panels, we've got the pedals, we have this... Um, the turbine back here with the engine, we've got the fuel tank, we've got um, the seats and other things like that. We've got the bolts, we have these four sockets here, and we have this panel here. And with the, the blade here, we've got a little fin here. You can see that with realism, there's a lot of little details that add to what makes something look real. Not just the overall shape and dimensions, but we also need the details. When it comes to stylization, you don't need to focus about the details too much. Minimization is key. Clear, silhouette, and language. If we unhide everything that we had before, I think my key area light is a bit too strong. So 500. There we go. That's a bit better. And maybe I can change the angle of the sun. Actually, it was kind of cool like this. So in this particular case here, um, I've changed it into the toy based on my memory, which is OK. And we can, with that, I can start creating Yeah. Let's just grab one of these. What happens if I put this in front of them? Back here a little bit. Yeah. I don't like it too much. Maybe hair. That's kind of cool. A good thing to help with your, your camera alignment is using the pass part out. So if we go back to the camera settings, take the camera, where is it? Is camera settings, viewport display, pass part out, make it black. Makes it a bit easier to understand the composition a bit better. If you want to make it smaller, bigger, larger, etc. I want to frame him a bit more by the rocks, that he's flying through the rocks. I'm going to pull out the camera, and then refocus onto the actual subject, the helicopter. Okay. And we have a new shot, a new frame. Maybe these mountains in the background here can be improved. But um, that's the difference when it comes to stylization and your model. I think your model's looking good. To get a bit more realism, you need a slightly more detail on the smaller pieces. To make it a bit more stylized, you need to focus on your proportions and which parts you want to keep and not. With that, or you can work on your own style depending on your balance of detail. And Nemo has asked, how about some motion blur for the blades? I think that's a good idea. But to do that, let's go into animation mode. Let's grab the, the blades. Let me just momentarily hide the volumes. Grab the blade. I go to frame zero to just 
Move it here like this. Z axis. This. And then I'm going to go to like frame five. Flip it around like this. Hit record. Go into the center frame. And turn on my motion blur. And I'm going to make the shutter quite long. And I'm going to hit render. Maybe I can make it even faster. Okay, I'm going to go to put this onto frame 3, go into frame 2, and then hit render. Mm, could go faster. Probably I need to like make sure it spin around even more. Hit record, go to frame 2, and then hit render. There we go, gone all blurry. Okay. Maybe make the angle a bit bigger, yes, that could work. Okay, so that's um, the little piece, and that's my feedback for you, Haley. Thanks for that question. Thanks for sharing your model. Things very good. I hope you guys found this rough idea of doing this block out of doing a quick little Blender Royale in the future to be useful and fun. The splash screen of today was actually made from many of my Blender Royales, or three of them in this case. And um, Nemo has actually shared that he's for a full rotation on a frame to the other, you can get some pretty convincing helicopter uh, motion blur. Or a 360 rotation here. In this case, I would have to parent to a null and then animate the null for a proper rotation. Times um, rotations are recorded in the world space per object other than nulls and armatures. So you have to use an armature or a null to get a good angle rotation. Good motion blur, get a lot. So the art that we have today, kindly provided by first one is Toxic Tuba. So this piece was actually submitted last week. On to the next segment. This piece was a song created by Toxic Tuba. And he created this kaleidoscope shader effect. Jack considered very interesting. So his tutorial that he's been showing is about kaleidoscopes, which I wish existed many years ago because I was trying to make kaleidoscopes. And the song is banging, actually. It's very good. So I recommend you take a look at his video. I'm going to copy it into the chat. Take a closer look. It is very trippy. Is that a shader? Oops, the wrong video. I think this is actually. Wrong video. So his tutorial that Toxic Tuber, I've known him a little bit in uh, the Discord server, and he usually creates kaleidoscopes and a number of different things, and he created a procedural shader or kaleidoscope shader to help create these effects. I recommend you take a look at that if you want to create something slightly more trippy and fun, and uh, see how he did this technique. So it's, um, I, I thought that was pretty cool. So thanks Toxic Tuber. if you're going to watch this later. We showcased your piece, I'll share it with you. The next piece that we have is by Lore Hal. So Lore Hal has been working with 
or he's been sharing his art in the Discord community for quite some time. And every now and then he comes up with another piece, which usually has a very minimal sci-fi kind of vibe to it, with a very clear color language that he works with. Let's take a closer look at his art. The Lore Hell is a new song that he's mentioned that's going to be released next Tuesday. And it comes with this particular character. So if we visit his Instagram account, uh, lore underscore underscore hell, we can see that his song that's coming out and his previous pieces it has a very strong rim light language, reds, whites, and blues, green sometimes. Very clear motion graphic kind of designs. And his upcoming song video is coming soon. But I think, yeah, it's coming this week. I'm not sure what this uh, video is about, but I do like how he's worked with the fabric materials and the way he has lit his rim lights. So in this particular case, I've really enjoyed this guy's work, his work because of his lighting and the work that he has been doing with these particular characters things. I'm not sure where it's going to go, but it should be coming this week. So keep an eye out at Lore's art in the future and for the video that's coming out for his client, and we'll see how it goes. The other piece we wanted to, I wanted to take a look at was More Progress by Mr. Crusader. I haven't talked to him yet about coming onto the show, but he may be, hopefully we can sign some time, some moments to record a little bit about his work since we've been watching it for quite a while. So last week we saw some updates of his work. We had a look with it that with Duncan Rudd. Lately he's been uh, working with his camera movements and some more chunks of his story. So he has mentioned in the chat that he is going to focus on a particular story. And in the particular frames, he's been focusing on a portal. He's working on that portal where we can see the edges of this portal area or room. Different parts of the world. There's a, something happening. He's, and my favorite piece from him this week was the ball inside of the hallways. Where the light leads on beyond, beyond the rooms. And on the carpet, we just see this ball bearing. Don't know why. So hopefully we can get him on the show so he can explain a bit more about his world. From there, we had a, had a look at Haley Twist's uh, helicopter. And Nemo, you're here at the moment, right? You have two new renders today. So I wanted to also share these two renders, which I thought were very good. And I think you're still one of the top candidates for the next splash screen for B4 Artist 3.5. So, I think they look good. It's between Yad and myself, it was one of our favorites this month so far. And another piece that we have come in over the, the work is by Iyad. So Iyad is also a little bit of a tech artist in his free time and he created this pole for a project of his and he found a technique that he was working with to help solve um, texture stretches on his planet take a closer look We've got really high definition materials and display and portrayal of the materials and at the top of the world where the texture wraps around on the cylindrical projection, he found a way or a technique to improve this. So he's used before, if we take a look at the poles of where things used to stretch. Zoom in. You can see that on Greenland, we have some weird stretching, uh, weird UV artifacts based on the projection of the world global texture. Before this, you would use the UV material. In this case, he decides to use the texture coordinates node, which we used earlier. 
he takes the object vector, changes the angle to 90 degrees, changes the projection of the texture into sphere, and then uses this vector rotation node to help define how you project the texture onto the actual world. So it's an interesting tip, interesting technique. I would not have understood how, but the results speak for themselves. So thanks, Yad, for that. I hope you watch into this later. Good to see this technique. And last but not least, I wanted to. I'm going to just save the scene so I can give this back to you, Haley. We'll call this the render. Thanks for lending me your model to play with. Good fun. So the gift that I would like to give to you is called Geometry Nodes Curve Create Read and Write Node Examples. So lately we've been doing a lot of studies, or I have on Twitter, where I publish a little study on each node with an example. So each node has a particular showcase, which are made in red, yellow, and blue. And I wanted to, and I've categorized all of the nodes into read, write, and operations nodes. Topology nodes are not included yet, and the primitives are not included yet. But for now, with these nodes, for example, the operations nodes, if we focus on the trim curve node, we have a very simple example where we press play, and we can see the nodes. We can see the animation thing between the two, the four curve points. If we select on it, Take a look at the notes here. We can see a little note, an explanation in dark blue, the system that we use to create notes. We have a system for creating the animation. And in orange, generally in orange, we have a the viewers. And we have the key node here right now that we can see with the start and the end and the basic example of how these nodes work, which is a uh, Completely procedural. We can change many little things as we want. We can use them for motion graphics for later, just for fun. And every single node has its documentation or a little note about it. And every single node tree, if we this is one of them, we get the subdivide curve node. This has another note, has another visualizer, and it helps us understand what's happening. And on top of that, we also got the reverse curve node. So basically, I got a little switch, which I can turn on or off, and it will just change the direction of the curve. Simple. Got the curve I fill would node. Hmm? Updating that one just to also display the normal. Display the what? The normal, because it also changes the normal direction. So oh, really? would be a good example if it. If you just if you showed both, all right, yeah, because the arrows do change their angle as well. Not too hard to do. Well, I'll give it to you as is for now. I do plan to make this into a better wiki later. My earlier examples are not very good. Go better later on in time. This one here is super simple. But yeah, thanks for that tip. I'll have to go through it again before I make it into an actual thing or later, an actual website. But we'll see. And also, Shmuel, how have you been? How is your curve pack and updates for your latest blocks doing? Um, well, it's kind of tedious. Um, but... Um... Hopefully, I'm saying it should it should be done soon. At least for the curves. Excellent, can't wait. There were a couple of nodes that I was having difficulty with plebes here looking at earlier this week was um the curve on points and the points of curves. Trying to work that out. Points of curve I use more often. I don't think I've ever used curve of point just because i never never needed to use it it's very specific 
But a curve, um, the reason why I use points of curves a lot is because of the weight feature in it. So you're able to sort points. It's very useful. I'll have to learn that one. Yeah, that weight. There was one technique it's where the I most noticed. useful feature that was added in whatever version it was added in. Losing track. I think that was 3.4. Curve handle selection. Usually green mean shows which the user input, which could be plugged outside here. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, it's still a work in progress, but I just wanted to share with you. Maybe it's useful. So that's it for today. Next week, I'll just give you a quick preview. Next week, we have a special guest. He is a YouTuber and a, an aspiring artist who has started to work with, um, with Geometry Nodes quite often. And he's also been teaching Geometry a little bit and also has been working with another project. A sneak preview is he's also changing his art direction to original content. Next week, he's going to be telling us a bit more about his ambitions, projects, what he's going to do, and also a little bit about his experience as a YouTuber. So we'll see how that goes. So we have Umaray, I think it is. Umaray, Kamaray, sorry, I keep forgetting the name. So Kamaray, he'll be speaking with us next week, and that's our special guest. Stay tuned. Same time, same place. And thanks for tuning in today. Thanks, everybody, for sharing your art in the community. Thank you for also paying attention and sharing your know-how. And I hope you found this little Blender Royale breakdown fun and interesting. And I think getting into one-hour renders is a good idea every now and then to keep you sharp. And also to not worry too much about the scope of a project. 3D doesn't have to be hundreds of hours. Sometimes it could just be one hour. That can be done after a lunch break. Until then, next week, I will see you same time, same place. Thank you for connecting.